Hey guys, today I'm going to be showing you how to reduce the load speed of a spline file when you embed it on a website. Now, here's a typical situation, right? You build uh, a 3D object and you're like, yep, cool, happy. And then you go to click export and then you have this performance uh, modal just down here and you click run test and you're like, ooh, okay, so this is gonna load on my website really slowly. Maybe you're just like, yeah, I'm just gonna try it out anyway. And then you go to the viewer and then you click this um, link and then you might go to something like Webflow or Framer and embed it and predictably it loads like a turd. So what do you do? Well, you might go down to here and you might look through this stuff. Um, you've got loads of uh, objects, booleans, polygons. You can reduce the number of polygons. Uh, you can reduce the number of materials. That seems to be the big thing that's killing this. Um, you can uh, try and reduce the number of subdivisions. <coughs> so what the hell does this all mean? We're going to go through this in uh, today's video and I'm also going to show you some other things too. Before I talk about that stuff though, I just want to ask you, why do you need to embed your spline asset in a website? So let's just put this out there. You might have a design which you want to have some interactivity and you might think, bingo, I'm just going to use a 3D asset. Well, just think about this for a second. You don't need to embed your spline file, okay? You can actually click export and you can record a GIF by going into here, GIF, and then you can record a GIF of maybe your animation spinning, okay? Now this is exactly what I did with this website called The Humble Strawberry. It was like a weird piece of work that I did. but. Basically, what I've got here is I've got different GIFs. This is not optimized for low speed. I need to do a lot more work on this to get this right. But I've got these GIFs here. Rather than having um, an embed and then four more embeds, I've just got GIFs because all I wanted them to do was to spin, right? I wanted some interactivity. And then I've only got one embed on the page max. You do not want to have multiple different embeds on a page, regardless of how well you optimize these different 3D objects, okay? Like, even if you get all four, five 3D objects to like 100 kilobytes, it's still going to kill your load speed, especially on mobile, okay? So just consider this. You don't need to have an embed on your website. So, like I said, Go down to video, record a GIF, or you can record a video if it's um, if it's actually going to be lighter. You can export different images. So again, with this website, um, which is not necessarily like the best performing website ever, but you've got like images of the object, right? I've only got one embed. I could have loads of embed on this site and make something crazy. In fact, the initial design was crazy, but I just think it's worth pointing this out at the start of the video. You do not need to have like an embed every time. How would you upload um, a GIF to your website, for example? Well, what I would recommend doing is going to GitHub, and then you can see I've used this for quite a few projects. Um, Let's say, uh, what can I show you? The humble strawberry, right? So I had these um, donuts <coughs> and um, cakes like I just showed you. You can actually upload, this is free by the way. You go to GitHub, click upload file, choose your file. So obviously after you've, um, after you've clicked on exporting your video, so obviously export the video um, and then you would <clears throat> and then you would uh, be able to GIF, start, you click record, you'd record that, you'd then compress it, so you'd go compress 
um, GIF, or you could compress um, MP4, compress that, that's going to be a smaller file size, and then you're going to be able to upload it to here. From here, you're then going to be able to upload it in your project. So one thing is that we've got on here uh, reduced the uh, polygons, okay? So if we look at uh, the corners of this, these are all smoothed down. Um, and how I'm doing that is I'm basically using um, a thing called subdivision modifier. Now if we click smooth and edit here, you can see that I've got level one subdivision modifier. And this actually happens whenever you make a shape and then you um, say you make a 3D uh, cylinder and then you're like, okay, I want to smooth and edit this. What you can do is you can click here and then you've got this one. Now if you change this, you can see that the corners of this are uh, changing. And that's basically adding loads of information to your project, okay? So if you reduce that from say two to one, that's already changing the load speed very slightly. But imagine doing that across a whole project like I've done here, like just that awareness as you're building to ensure that things are loaded quickly or like reducing the file size is quite key. So subdivision modifier looks good because you can make smooth corners, but see if you can do the smooth corners without actually um, manipulating the shape as much as as much as I am here you know you can actually reduce the reduce that size or potentially use two shapes and merge them together to reduce that okay so that's one thing second thing that I want to talk about is matte cap materials okay so let's look at this if you have a um, let's say you have a cylinder and you want, want loads and loads of lights pointing at it because you want it to be like super bright and reflective. Now, one way of doing that is yes, pointing loads of light at it. The problem with that is that you are adding loads of load speed if you do that. So the best way I've found of having uh, lights on your scene is actually to use the material layers. You can use the matte cap and then this basically has inherent properties on on this you see how it's like shining as we as we move it around that's not because we've got a ton of lights pointing at it we've got one light here in fact if I just turn this off you'll see that there is no change whatsoever to this scene and what's really cool is like you're like oh yeah that's kind of cool but I want more reflection you can do that right these have inherent light properties so that it looks like there's tons of light pointing at it. There's not. And this means that you're reducing the file size again. Okay. Now what you can do is you can actually upload your own matte caps as I've done here. You just click plus and then you can uh, click here and click replace image. And I've done that with this um, brush metal effect which is really cool. Like it looks pretty realistic. <clears throat> again has its own inherent light properties so you don't need to point loads of lights at it few other things that are worth knowing Fresnel layers this is really interesting so you can actually make a scene lighter so you're like oh, I want a kind of um, glow effect around my object you can add a Fresnel layer uh, which is basically a lighting layer which is around the outside of your object. So I'm just going to put um, matte cap below here and I'm going to make that overlay. Okay, great. And then let's give this a darker color. And actually, we need to make this a 3D shape. Okay, great. So you see how we've got this object here now and this Fresnel layer is basically adding that edge to this it's giving it even more light to that so you can see how we've got a matte cap layer we've got this um, Fresnel layer over the top and it's adding a ton of light 
or what looks like light to this, but it's actually just a material layer. Now, if we turn off directional light, again, you see there's no change whatsoever. So by adding layers, you don't want to add too many layers because obviously if you add loads of layers, that adds loads of information to the page and you know it will take uh, a while to load. But you can see we've added a couple of layers that mean that we've avoided using the, the lighting layer and uh, we've still got, um, sorry, we've avoided using spotlights or point lights and we've got um, loads of lighting effects happening. Another thing that's quite useful to talk about is merging objects. If you have loads and loads of objects on your page, let's um, put, so we see we've got a kind of cubey thing. I'm going to add something else. Okay, we've got all these, right? Now these might all be separate layers. Um, and instead of using separate layers, what I recommend you doing is actually merging them, okay? So we've got four different objects in here. What we can do is we can actually uh, highlight all of them. In fact, let's give it some kind of uh, matte cap so that we can see them a bit better. <coughs> and we can actually click Merge Geometries up here. Ooh. We can actually click Merge. This, this is the button that you need to click, sorry. And that has basically given all of them. Okay, another thing to mention is about textures. Okay, so we've got different materials in here, and if we reuse the materials rather than subtly changing each one, we can basically duplicate the material layer onto these, uh, these different layers. How we do that is we can just click this plus icon, and then, uh, sorry, these four dots, and then click this plus, and then you can basically have one material layer which you can then apply to all of them so instead of having like all of these with these individual uh, layers here you basically just apply the same thing across the board and the thing is the more different um, materials you have the more again your scene is going to be heavy so just try and duplicate and use um, the same material layers as much as possible even if it's like slightly different, try and double double them up because it's really, really helpful to reduce the file size. Final things to mention that I think would be useful to know about is say you're like, ah, Jack, I need to use an embed and um, I want, I, I need this to be smaller. Maybe you can use 2D rather than 3D. Um, you can do some amazing things using 2D platforms like Rive, um, which will give you a way smaller file size and you know incredible uh, 2d animations that I think are well worth you know exploring the other tool that I think is really worth knowing about is peach web and these guys are basically doing uh, two sorry 3d uh, website 3d immersive website building basically so it's it's not like you would have um, like if you if you're using Spline and then using something like Webflow Framer, those are two completely different platforms that you're trying to get to work to play nicely together. Whereas this is specifically built for 3D immersive websites, so you can see how quick this is to load and how impressive it is. The thing that's just worth considering as you um, start playing with 3D and getting into it. Hope this video helps you uh, to um, actually like wrangle your 3D assets. Make sure that they're as small as possible. It's a little bit finickety and you've got to kind of work it out depending on what you're trying to achieve. But hopefully this tutorial helped you. Cheers.